हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम यू ऑल इन माई टूडेज लेक्चर आई विल एक्सप्लेन द ऑक्सीजेशन ऑफ डाइहाइड्रिक एल्कोहल यूजिंग पर आइडिक एसिड एंड लेट टेट्रा एसिटेट सो दिस इज ऑल्सो नोन एज द ऑक्सीडेटिव क्लीवेज ऑफ डाइहाइड्रिक एल्कोहल एंड द ऑक्सीडेशन ऑफ डाइहाइड्रिक एल्कोहल और विस्नल डायऑल यूजिंग दिस पर आइडिक एसिड दैट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज मेलाप्रेड रिएक्शन okay so during oxidation during oxidation of this alcohol the carbon atom of alcohol that is being oxidized whereas these oxidizing agent get reduced so per iodic acid having the formula hio4 and this is having the iodine having plus 7 oxidation state that is converted into h3io4 which is having plus 5 oxidation state and this lead tetracetate where the oxidation state of lead is plus 4 this is being converted into lead diacetate where the oxidation state of lead is plus 2 okay so during this oxidation reaction the uh, one of the cyclic ester okay in between the reaction the formation of cyclic ester takes place Okay. Now, if you see the reaction, and suppose if we have any dihydric alcohol, and it will react with suppose per iodic acid. I am taking per iodic acid. This is HiO four. So now this ox uh, iodine being the electron def deficient, having the partial positive charge there are this oxygens having the partial negative charge so over this this lone pair of electron that will attack over here and this electron will go this pi bond will break and what you will get this here the positive charge will get formed over the oxygen atom and now this being having the negative charge OH and double bond O. Okay. Now, in next step, what will happen? The internal proton transfer will take place, and so here, so what you will get. Okay. Now, in next step, again, this is a lone pair electron that will go into this iodine, and one of this pi bond that will break, and you will get a Then having negative charge, this OH double bond O. This is OH. Again, this proton transfer, internal proton transfer will takes place, and this positive charge over this oxygen that will be neutralized. So here you will get the cyclic ester that is produced. So you may see the cyclic ester is formed. Now again, in next step, if you see that this oxygen iodine bond, this is a weak bond, so this will break, and it will break to form. Here, this double bond will be formed. This oxygen iodine bond has broken down, as you can see here. Now again, this bond will break. This carbon-carbon bond will break, and you will 
So you, you can see three bonds are breaking over here, this one, this one and this. Three bonds are breaking over here and if you see then two molecule of their two molecule of this carbonyl compound is formed and plus plus what is we have been formed is H3IO4 is formed. H3IO4 this is being formed. Okay, so this is a simple mechanism for the formation of for the oxidation of this. So if you will see here, then on this carbon atom, on this carbon atom, the what is the oxidation state of this carbon atom? So this all this carbon carbon bond, carbon carbon bond, on only this one of the carbon oxygen bond is present. So oxygen having minus one charge, whereas this carbon will having the plus one. So that's why oxidation state of here plus one. Similarly, oxidation state of this plus one. But here if you will see, if you will see here then and this is having minus 2 charge and this carbon will having the plus 2 charge. Okay, So that's why the oxygen state of this carbon here is plus 2. So plus 1 converted into plus 2 and here this plus 7 converted into plus 5. So this is a type of oxidation reduction reaction. So in this way we may see the other reactions also. Suppose if we have a trihydric alcohol. If we have suppose trihydric alcohol, like this, and suppose if we oxidize it using this per iodic acid, then what you have seen here. So here one of the this carbon carbon bond has broken down and this carbon is being oxidized to this uh, carbonyl compound or here you are getting the ketone in the same way this carbon is uh, oxidized to this ketone. So how you have got it? So suppose you have got it when when so this has been broken and this has been oxidized so what we can write it simply for, for understand for just remembering it so one you may after this bond breaking you may add one of the OH over here and you have may add one of the OH over here and remove the H2O molecule from here so you will get this carbon and this bond this bond and this double bond okay carbon oxygen double bond you will get the get the carbon oxygen double bond in the same way Remove one of the H2O molecule from here and you will get another molecule of this carbonyl compound. In the same way, here if you will see the two, uh, uh, two COH, COH, this molecule here, one of the oxidative cleavage will take place from here, another oxidative cleavage from here. So it means a two molecule of periodic acid is used over here. So how you can see, so one of the OH will come over here another OH here and when this will break then this one OH this one OH like this so what you have you may see what you may see so this will here this H2O molecule get released and what you are getting you are getting here this carbon being attached to these two hydrogen atoms and this you are getting the CO so you are getting formaldehyde in the same way here also you will get this uh, terminal carbon this terminal one this will also be oxidized in a similar way like that one so two molecule of formaldehyde is formed whereas this middle carbon so middle carbon if you like this middle carbon then you have uh, this three OH being attached to this and if you want to write the product then remove this H2 molecule from here and what you are getting, you are getting this H, C, okay, and this is OH, this OH, and this C double bond O. So you are getting formic acid. So that's why uh, here you will get one molecule of formic acid and two molecule of formaldehyde is formed. In a, now in next example, suppose if we have the glucose and glucose on oxidation with a periodic acid. So what would be the product when glucose gets oxidized? 
nucleus of or ionic acid now okay so here if you will see let me write it so now the cleavage oxidative cleavage will takes place so one of the oxidative cleavage will occur from here another from here third one fourth one and fifth one so that's why this five molecule of peridic acid that would be used over here now after this what i have told you so for this you will add one of the oh over here another oh like this oh this one oh oh like this now so these in this the on this carbon two molecule of this oh three oh is present over here so if suppose this three oh is present this one and this three oh is present on second carbon third carbon fourth carbon and fifth carbon okay one two three four five six. so second third fourth and this one fifth one so three OH groups are present over here and remove one molecule of this H2 from here and what you will get? You will get the formic acid. So this one molecule of formic acid from here and next four molecule of formic acid from here. So you will get the five molecule of formic acid plus and this is CH2OH group and one of the OH groups that will be attached over here and after the removal of this H2O what we will get? We will get formaldehyde. So this would be the product when the glucose is being oxidized by using the paraitic acid. Now suppose if we have fructose, then what would be the product when we have the fructose? Suppose if we are having fructose, So again, how many molecules of periodic acid is used for this? So one oxidative cleavage will take place from here, another from here, like this. So again, five molecule of periodic acid that would be used. So after that, what you, you have to do? Add this OH over here. In the same way, you may add OH one here for this one OH. In the same way, we have to go add this OH and this and finally what you have to do remove if uh, how many this uh, 2 OH and 3 OH to represent on this carbon this one this one and this on this 3 uh, 3 molecule of this OH is present over here and remove the, that one so this 2 molecule in this terminal carbon this two terminal carbon that will give you the formaldehyde after removing the H2 molecule and these three carbons these three that is third one fourth one and fifth one it will give you the formic acid so three molecule of formic acid that would be formed and here this COH this is this one and this OH, OH, so remove this H2 molecule from here. We will remove the H2 molecule, and what we will get is CO2. So, CO2 molecule, one molecule of CO2 that would be formed. So, like this, we can write the uh, product of this uh, oxidative cleavage. Now, in the same way, we may write the mechanism for the oxidation uh, of by using this lactate tracitate. So, suppose if we are having and we have this diol so diol in presence of this lead tetraacetate so 
here this having the negative charge over this oxygen this is having the positive charge partial positive charge present over the lead and this will attack over here and one of the acetate group that will leave out so acetate group being the good leaving group so o minus co ch3 this is being the good leaving group because this is one of the reason this is one of the oxy resin is stabilized one so this is good leaving group okay so that's why what you will have so oxygen is having the positive charge over here and now this acetate group here so this acetate group now that will act as a conjugate base and that can take out this acidic hydrogen so it may take out this acidic hydrogen and you may get In next step again, so this lone pair of electron that will attack over here, electrophilic center, and so, so this will leave out, sorry, see, and you will get this one. And finally, this again this acetate ion it will take out this H plus and this positive charge over the oxygen atom that would be neutralized. And we will is we are having cyclic ester again. Okay. So next step, this oxidative cleavage of here this carbon carbon bond will get cleaved and we will have two molecules of this carbonyl compound plus lead diacetate that is being formed so this is a simple mechanism uh, for the oxidation of this lead tetraacetate